So thank you so much for everyone for joining us. My name is Nick and I'm one of the events hosts here at Powell's Books in Portland, Oregon. Before we begin, I just want to encourage you to check out our lineup of upcoming virtual events by visiting our website at powells.com. One of the many events we're looking forward to is Babylon 5 creators John Michael Straz J. Michael Straczynski's In Conversation with columnist and book review editor Tony Norman about Straczynski's new novel, Together We Will Go, next Thursday, the 15th. If you don't already do so, please follow us on social media, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Tonight, we are so excited to welcome two hilarious gentlemen, Tom, Tom Sharpling and Nathan Fielder. Tom Sharpling is a comedian, television writer, producer, music video director, and radio host. For 18 years, he has hosted the weekly radio call-in program, The Best Show with Tom Sharpling. He is also known as the voice of Greg Universe on his, the hit Cartoon Network animated series, Steven Universe. Previously, he was a writer executive producer for the Emmy award-winning show, Monk. Sharpling is good at being funny, which is a miracle considering what he survived like hitting a deer and narrowly escaping with his life on the night of the 2016 election. But that's nothing compared to the struggles he had earlier in his life. It Never Ends is his memoir of a life writing comedy amidst a lifelong struggle with mental illness, a story he has never told before. It's the heartbreaking account of his intense coming of age and the lengths he's undertaken to pull away from the brink of self-destruction. Sharpling brought himself back to life first with punk scenes and NBA coverage, then through the world of comedy, writing and executive, executive producing Monk, and creating one of the best, beloved, longest running comedy radio pro broadcasts, podcasts, The Best Show. Of course, there are also the, tan the tangents into auditioning for the new monkeys, why Billy Joel sucks, the siren call of sex in the city slot machines, and how he made a fool of himself in an elevator with Patti Smith. Tom is a quintessential underdog, and he wears that status on his sleeve as a badge of honor. With, this mem with his memoir, he lifts the curtain to let the light in on the turmoil that still follows him, even as he racks up accolades and achievements. But most importantly, he reminds us that while many of us carry trauma and shame, we are not alone. It never ends is about rising above whatever circumstance you can find yourself in and getting the most out of your life while steamrolling the chumps along the way. <laughs> Joining Sharpling in conversation this evening is Nathan Fielder. Fielder is a writer, director, and comedian from Vancouver, British Columbia. He is best known for his hit television series, Nathan For You, which debuted in 2013 on Comedy Central. His other credits include The Simpsons, Transparent, Bob's Burgers, Kroll Show, Rick and Morty, John Benjamin Has a Van, and the CBC series, This Hour Has 22 Minutes. So uh, this evening's event will include an audience Q&A. Please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen if you'd like to ask a question. As well, if someone has typed a question you'd also like to know the answer to, please upvote that particular question by clicking the thumbs up button. Most importantly, please consider supporting Tom and Powell's by purchasing a copy of his memoir from us. A link to buy It Never Ends will be shared in the chat a couple of times tonight. Though we are currently sold out of the book, if you order it tonight, we will have more again in a week and you can put an order in tonight and it'll come shortly after that. So Tom and Nathan, it's uh, so great to have you with us tonight and welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having us. Um, <laughs> how are you? Oh, I'm good. Are how you are off? You? Okay, okay, there we go. Um, Tom. I know. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. This, thanks for doing this. Thank you for having me. And it was weird because I got like, I got a rush of nerves as um, he was doing his intro because I realized kind of I'm like, I've been on your show, um, the best show, um, a couple times, and you're such a good host. So you like, I just have to kind of be there, but you kind of guide it all, and today I'm supposed to guide it. So I'm, uh, it's like, a am a little out of the, my comfort zone a little because I'm not as good at this as you, but um, I'm very well, excited to do this because firstly, you're an amazing man and you wrote an amazing book. And I'm assuming also people who are watching this or most people know that 
you're one of the greatest comedic minds of the last hundred years. Prior to that, I, you know, there was some great comedy going on, so I can't speak for previously, but like, um, I, I think I've told you before, but like, I used to listen to the, um, your bits with John Worcester on the, the, um, the TTC, which is like the Toronto transit, like when I discovered them and I would like laugh out loud in that circle. And it's hard for me to like laugh out loud in general, but mm -hmm. like when you're with, when you're around strangers, there's like, like an extra threshold, like to not laugh because it's embarrassing, but I would still mm -hmm. laugh. So it's kind of like, that's how like funny and like, kind of like, oh my God, this is amazing comedy. I was kind of obsessed before I even met you. And so I'm flattered you asked me to do this and I'm, I'm, I'm flattered to be your friend. And uh, um, oh. I think I th I'm so I'm so like uh, happy for you that, that that you you're having all this success with this book. Well, that that means so much, and you you know what you mean to me. But you, you're just to me as funny as it gets. And okay, well, Tom, wait, it's not no. about me today. Please excuse me. This is about you're you. The you're the best. I just want to say you're the best. That's all. You're you're the best. Um, you're, a little, you're a little bit better than me. So, so you, um, so you're, um, so th let me just uh, ask my first question I have here. Is it hard to uh, write a book? Um, yeah, it was really hard. The, to write this book was really hard. I think it might've been easier to write like other books. Like I had thought at one point about doing something that would be more just like superficial a little more like best show like behind the scenes on the best show or some kind of thing like that like some kind of like and that would have been i could have written that like a breeze that would have been fun to do but then it was like if i was going to do this i kind of wanted to it dawned on me that i just had to do it um i had to kind of go all in on it like if i was going to do it i couldn't just do some kind of lighter book um, I wanted to do something that kind of where I just laid it all out and then I could go forward from that and see what anything, what everything looks like after that. But I needed to kind of say, say all the stuff I say in this book and own all the stuff I own in this book. And then I can then see where every, where that puts me. But I, I felt anything would have been kind of like a little bit of a cop out to just keep it breezy and not say things that that I know are like the um you know things things that are the the motor for how I ended up where how I ended up being the person I am like I just I didn't want to overlook or deny or hide uh, a lot of things anymore so the, yeah because so I, I I didn't know what to expect when I you know, read it and I, I know you personally. And, and then I reading the book, I realized, oh, I actually don't know you um, because of how much you kind of say in here, or I don't know everything about you because there's all these things of your life that, um, you know, were you really kind of say everything, <laughs> or I don't know if you say everything. Was there stuff that you, like, how did you decide what to include and what to not in like, the book i mean i i kind of knew the whole time like if i'm gonna do this i kind of have to talk about like mental health stuff and all the stuff i went through as a kid that it just would be i would just be it's kind of like everything grew from that in so many ways and and fueled who i became from that and for me to kind of dodge that would have been um I just had to do it, even though it was, it was really upsetting sometimes. And there were nights I would write the book and then I would just like drive around and be thinking like, I think I'm taking the worst parts of my life and I'm turning them into like entertainment. And I just didn't want it to be like the thing where people would like, just like laugh at things I wrote in the book, like, oh, like, here's you being a like oh such a loser and this happened and such a 
this was a failure and like all these like things that were so painful to me i was worried i was just turning it into content that somebody would just potentially laugh at me or uh, or kind of like just be like what a like just like what a dipshit like like that would be the thing and it was just like that was my fear and i knew it was mostly unfounded that I just need I could control the way I was depicting myself but that was still a real fear with it and there were some nights that it were really rough yeah that's um was there stuff that you were like I can't do this thing that you were like I don't want to because it feels like you're being completely open I wonder if like how you made the choice of like should I, were there things that you put in the book that you were like, I don't know if I, and then you decided to put it in because you just had to, or? Yeah, I mean, just the, look, I mean, the the story about the new monkeys is as, is as embarrassing as it gets. And I was just like, I know it's funny, as painful and mortifying as it is. I'm just like, I just have to le- lean into it rather than kind of pull back from it. And I could also figure out like context to be just like, yeah, well, this happened when I was not having an easy time of things. So it kind of informed my rickety thinking was informed by that. But it was, yeah, there were points when I was just like, man, this is going to be out there for everybody. And this is, that, that's, it's just like stepping through a doorway. And then- How old were you like, again when you auditioned for the new monkeys? It's 18. I mean, that's like, I, did I ever tell you that I like, um, I worked for a season on Canadian Idol, which was like the Canadian version of American Idol? No. So people would come like 16, 18 year olds would come in and like audition for me because I was a seg, I was like a producer uh-huh. and I had to decide if they would make it. But that section of the book like reminded me of like, kind of like how secondhand embarrassed, like how you were saying you felt kind of reiterating it was kind of like, I felt on behalf of people who were like thinking this is gonna be like, I'm gonna do this and this is gonna be like mm-hmm. my life. Um, and yeah. also, you know, like how little I know about music um, and how unqualified I am in that position. Mm-hmm. So, um, but it's Canada, I guess they, they don't have a lot of people to do various jobs. I mean, I guess um, somebody shows up and does what, like a Kim Mitchell, so whether they do patio lights or, or um, go for a soda. Yeah, it would be. Um, I don't know any of those songs, but um, it would it would generally be like whatever was like a, kind of a top forties hit or kind of like mm-hmm. the classic, um, like whatever it was. And there would be a lot of the like uh, with the voice, um, you know that that thing that people add. What's it called? And you're like uh. Oh, you like the that. auto-tuning, like that? No, no, no. Like where Oh, like the trills, like, like all those vocal and... trills, yeah. Yeah, like trills. The, oh, oh, kind of oh, you, like, oh, that oh, doesn't oh. mean it's good, because I would put all those people through it first, because I was like, whoa, that's good. And then yeah. they're like, that's not actually good singing. Um, but yeah, it would be just kind of like um, pop, pop songs. And mm-hmm. it was basically a lot of people just thinking like their life dreams were in my hands, and I had a really hard time turning people away so I ended up uh putting people through just because I didn't want to reject them um (laughs) anyways that's probably why the show was so bad Mm -hmm. um but somewhere there's a there's a winner who has you to thank for making them Canadian Idol well I mean it's the system itself I think was a was a problem because I was worked on the fifth season and I, I was told that the first season winner was working at a coffee shop at that Mm -hmm. time. So it wasn't really like here where you, you get a talk show or whatever the winners do now. Sure. Um, But anyways, um, enough about, enough about that. Um, So uh, how did you pick the uh, price to sell your book at? I noticed it's um, $27, but um, Michelle Obama's book is only $11. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of wondering um, why you think it's more worth more than that. Why do I think mine is two and a half times as important as hers? Mm -hmm. Um, 
But we did a fair amount of market research on that. And and I don't, I, Nathan, I don't know. You know, I don't know that. It's like, and also Michelle Obama's is in paperback now. Her, I'm sure her hardcover was $35. So if anything, this is a bargain. Um, I know it's also, it's in the uh, uh, punk musician biographies category uh, on Amazon. You're not a punk musician. What is that about? Um, well, again, it's a testament to, uh, to the strength of this book that it transcends categories that I don't even belong in that somehow I could be topping the punk, <laughs> the punk musicians biography charts is, um, it's also a testament to maybe how light the, the publishing world is on punk music biographies. Yeah, it's actually, um, you're in the rock band biographies too, and you're right after Alice in Chains, The Untold Story. Okay. So, well, wouldn't it be hopefully a told people will story now? Wouldn't it what? like, we shouldn't that just be called the told, the, like, it's not the untold story. If, the, if there's a book of it, it's clearly a told story. Well, right, right. Maybe they're referring to um, before you open it. I guess it would have to say, untold story, open this book and it's a told story. I guess that's kind of an interesting thing because, because um, you know, uh, I was a little disappointed when your book ended because it kind of felt like uh, false advertising in a way. Because mm -hmm. um, it's called It Never Ends. Okay, that's not uh, that good of a joke. Um, no, but it's, it's sure not Sure, people have made it before. But let's, let's talk about the title um, of your book. What, uh, what, why did you, what, what, why did you pick the title? Um, just because when I started putting it together, it seemed like there were a lot of things that just were like weird echoes of things that had happened already that it just seems like it's things, the same things change shape, change form, but happen over and over again. Like, I mean, the story that I start the book off with is like, I, I've told this Patty Smith story on the best show before numerous mm -hmm. times where I I went into an elevator after seeing her over and over at a hotel and then finally started talking to her and then really just did a, a horrible job at it. And I think I scared her. What was the band off. you referenced again? Oh, Humble Pie. I said, did you ever Humble see Pie. Humble Pie back in the day? And then I think she got off on the wrong floor just to get away from me. And she said that was before her time. She said it was before her time, which it wasn't. And um, oh. she was probably climbing the fire escape to get to her, her floor. <laughs> and, um, but then I realized when I was telling it, I really did start to think about this other story with this other musician, Marshall Crenshaw, who I completely humiliated myself in front of when I was a kid trying to get his autograph during a concert. And that was then I was just like, I'm still doing the same things. The same things are still happening. I'm making the same things still happen. It was like a weird, a weird revelation to see that um, that it's kind of the same stuff over and over. No matter where I'm at in my life, it's these things are happening over and over. So, and I didn't call the book "This Book Never Ends." Like then you'd have a, then you'd be a hundred percent right. That's false advertising. If I said this book never ends, <laughs> right, right. So I guess I'll email them and retract my complaint. Um, oh, yeah. uh, now that you've clarified that, so thank you. Uh, you talked about the best show. Like in the book, it's like this thing that you you keep coming back to. You kind of like you have to leave for various reasons sometimes. And, and it's this thing you keep coming back to because because you just love it. It's this thing in your life that you just love. It brings you like the most joy, no matter if it's less, uh, you can't make money from it like other work. And like, I've been in the studio with you and I was lucky enough to come to the WFMU studio, which was like um, visiting, um, what's something that's like, uh, 
like Pharaoh's tomb or something. Uh, what's the, what's the, not Pharaoh's tomb, but like, uh, like a shrine for me. Cause I'm like, Whoa, this is where it is. Mm -hmm. But seeing you in the studio, it's like, you're, you're kind of in a trance when you do the show, your eyes are closed. And it's, it's like this amazing performance where it's just like, you have a response to everything everyone says. And you're like, I, it was it's it's it was amazing like and I watched you for like half an hour before or an hour before I was even on and just watching you do that was so incredible um so maybe like what what is that like uh, I mean what is the thing about the show that you just feel like just keeps drawing you in that um makes I, it so meaningful it's just a it's it's like a thing that I have it just makes sense to me. It's like, I'm not, it's not a visual thing. It's like, I'm not, I don't like being on camera with stuff. So it's, but I like performing in terms of with audio stuff I love. That feels like the perfect fit for me. And it just, it feels like something I just learned how to control and pace out and kind of like, you, can, you know, you can kind of, you know, when you're like editing something and you just know when it feels right and it feels like, like in your bones, you know, like that works. Yeah. And it's just like, like, and then you, but you also know when something feels false or, or it's just, we're not there. We don't have it yet. Or it feels off or whatever that is. It's just like, whatever that detector is that you get built into after you do something for a while, it's like, that's the strongest one I have for anything I've ever done in my life is to just do that show. And I can kind of feel what's working and know what needs to happen next and kind of really like be inside of it. And it's, it's, there's nothing else like that in my life. Everything else I can kind of see myself doing it. And it's kind of like more of a, an exercise or more like work and, but doing the yeah. best show just feels like it just happens. And I just like, I'm not going to say that like I'm along for the ride or something else is ha like, it's just like, no, but it's like, it's something I can control and really just hand myself over to. Yeah. Um, it definitely felt that way um, watching you in there. And it was also interesting to read in the book, you kind of break down rock rot and rule, which was the first, it's the first Sharpling and Worcester thing right yeah that, you that guys was did the together. First, first one we ever did yeah and it's amazing to like hear you talk about it and just how because usually you know you fail at these first attempts at like doing kind of stuff it's it's and, and this is like it's so funny it's like an amazing it's like an hour right or is half how long is this like 40 like 45 minutes yeah you did a like 45 minute like comedy piece uh and it was just perfect and incredible and use the form just perfectly and the lack of awareness from the audience as to what you were doing and like the frustration mm -hmm. and just like um yeah it's just so rare that I feel like you stumble upon and you're like well this is it and it works like you might have the feeling you want to do it but it's not perfect but it was like it was amazing from the start and then you guys just just kept innovating in the form um, it, you and John Worcester, yeah. It's the weirdest thing because it, it is like, and nothing else in my life has ever happened like that way where it's just like, where it just clicks from the get-go from a creative standpoint and you're like, oh no, this is the best version of it happened right away. It's like, it usually, everything is a process and, and it, you finally get to a point where you're like, okay, now this is kind of where I wanted this thing to be. But that first call we did, I was like, I don't even know what I was like that. I felt like a spectator on in a, in a way like that's the, that first one, I will say it was like something else was happening and, and I'm glad it did. Cause then I would, then I just believed that that it would always be like that because it was like that once. And, um, it's kind of like, lets you realize what it would be like to be like, a um, like, like have a huge hit early in your musical career and then just be chasing that forever. Like you'd be just like, I, I can get the formula right again somehow. Like it's, let me figure it. Like I did it once I could do it again. And it's like, thankfully we, 
we're able to figure our version of, of, it, of it out to where it's sustained and we could do our own thing. And, but it was like, if I never went back to that, that would, that would have been like haunting to just feel that like we got next to a thing and then never did it again. And what would that have been like? So, you know, cause there was a version of things where I'd stopped doing the best show. I'd stopped doing radio it wasn't called the best show yet. And I was like, um, if I would have gotten like a job, like a writing job that would have taken all my time and I didn't get back to doing radio, then I never would have done that again. But there would have been this thing that never got fulfilled. So I'm glad I got to do it, obviously. Yeah. Um, we're all, we're all, uh, we're all fortunate for your continued participation in that. Um, you you also talked about like in terms of you just like continuing to do it. Like you talked about how like you talked about comedians kind of like resting on their like one thing. Like you kind of like you were saying you have this one thing and you, you like when you have these like hits you could just stop and kind of be like okay well that's it. But you're like you always have the appreciation for people who just like keep going and like failing after successes because they just keep wanting to pump out things and that like that kind of resonated you know with, with me just thinking about stuff and and uh um is that kind is that kind of how you view your your career in terms of like wanting to like what, what do you you have this show and it's amazing so like what do you where do you see like uh your your uh your life going with in terms of this stuff like you know it's like look i feel like you and me and all of our friends are kind of like our circle of friends were very like similarly minded in a way where we all do things that we want to do and chase things we want to exist and we don't do think we try to just do good stuff and it's just like that seems to be the con that's the constant through through um my life and i think that's why i get along with you so well and with other friends of ours we all share that in common where we're just like we just we want it if we're going to do something we want it to be something we would want to see exist not just something where it's like oh no i know this sucks but it other people will like it. It's like, no, I want to make stuff that I would want to see or hear. And there's so that's like, a, it's you, you start to realize that not everybody holds themselves to that standard, which I mean, might seem obvious, but it's, it still surprises me sometimes when people that I respect will just be like, just working on something that they know isn't great and they're but they're doing it and if they're doing it for money they want to i that's everybody's business you do what you got to do if you have kids or whatever of course you go take care of your family and you do that but it's like i just i do try to strike a balance to where the stuff i'm doing is stuff i can be be proud of and i feel like that's i feel like again we have that in common and you and me and you know, Jason Walliner and just all of our friends, we do these things because they're, because we want them to exist. Well, it's, yeah, and something about also like chasing the thing that's not kind of the familiar joke or something or chasing the thing that's like, oh, that's just something that feels like it doesn't follow the exact structure of comedy, but it makes you laugh or something. But, I mean, it's always, um, um yeah i i agree i think but, I, I, like I it can make sense to you like stuff makes sense to you like when you do things you if you know when it's funny even if other people aren't getting it yet you it's like it kind of doesn't matter in a way right mm -hmm. yeah i mean yeah i think i think that's true that's like the, the the when you talked about rock rotten rule i think that was it where you were just like well everyone who listened at the uh, like 
probably the majority of people seem to hate it, you said, but you felt how funny it was and you and Worcester and, and it kind of, that's what made you keep doing it. It wasn't really about the audience reaction, just like you're in the zone with that. Um, so there's a lot of um, kind of jocks versus nerd stuff in the book. Uh, what do you say to all the jocks out there that might be offended by this book? Uh, take a lap. <laughs> Go do your jock business. Go push that football thing you push down the field when you're doing your football business. Right? Drop and give me 20. I don't know what <laughs> they, can, <laughs> they can do. You, um, it is like, uh, like, it, do you feel like where your high school kind of was like typical of a New Jersey, like you, there's a lot about New Jersey and, and I've never really spent a lot of time in New Jersey. Um, I'm probably like the furthest point from it in Vancouver, Canada, where I grew up. Um, mm -hmm. Is, um, mm -hmm. what, what would you feel like is the, like, how would you kind of describe your relationship with New Jersey now that you no longer live there? Oh, I, Are you happy I, to be gone? No, no, no. I look. I I'll, I'm look. I'm happy to be in Los Angeles. Absolutely. Um, but I, I'll always love New Jersey. I I just like it means a lot to me, and um, it's where I grew up. So it'll it'll always have a huge uh, hold on me and kind of cast a shadow over things. But it also is a massive. Uh, it's it's massively exciting to be uh, to be in Los Angeles and living the life I'm living. I just that to me the is Hollywood like, lifestyle. The Hollywood lifestyle, yes, where we meet over at uh, the uh, Viper Room and and I can't even think of fake things. To do. It's like, it's how it shows how little of that stuff I would ever do. I can't even fake those things. Um, no, it's just it, the New Jersey, like growing up in New Jersey was great because I think it was a chance to be just kind of off the grid in a way and, and figuring things out, but being next to big cities like New York, city or philadelphia being around things but also kind of not being that like it's 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 kind of exciting to feel that second class citizen uh feel that being in new jersey mm -hmm. gives you you mean compared to like because you're near new york yeah, exactly. Like that's where all the exciting stuff happens. And then you, I would have to go back to the suburbs and um, not be not be fabulous. And they stayed fabulous 24 seven, or at least that's what and how far how far is it from New York to New Jersey? From where I grew up, I'd be about um, I was about 45 minutes from being in Manhattan. So it on was the not, subway? Or no, driving? just driving in. Yeah. Is, there, is there a subway that goes out there? Well, there's a path train that goes from uh, Manhattan to uh, Hoboken and Jersey City. Yeah, so you could take you, that's a 10 minute train to be from uh, the like from where uh, like the financial district, like World Trade Center to uh, Hoboken or Jersey City is like 10, 15 minutes. Um. Okay, well, I guess uh, since I've kind of moved to uh, basically just asking um, transit directions in New York, I think it might be a good time to take uh, questions from this Q&A thing on this Zoom, which um, I guess anyone who's listening, if they have questions, they can type it into this Q&A thing and I'll try mm -hmm. to get these to Tom. Um, so, um, and this is supposed to all feel, uh, simulate kind of, uh, or em emulate being in the bookstore. So I hope, uh, we're creating the vibe so far of, uh, being at Pow Powell's books, um, yeah. um, and the intimate type of conversation you might see in a bookstore. Um, exactly. I picture there's 
that we're doing this at Powell's, that there are customers milling about that have no idea what any of this is, and they're slightly annoyed by it, that maybe some old timer wants to get to the other side of the room and our, our conversation is kind of cluttering up his path and he's irked. Yeah, pal, I think we, we asked Powell's to include people in the Zoom who uh, are, are do not want to be on a Zoom and are just trying to go somewhere else to kind of create that energy. Yeah, to get that, that I came here to shop. Why, are, why is this happening? And also I saw in the chat, I just want to say the person who wrote when I was talking about how long the path train took and wrote, um, what's the bus schedule like? I saw that and I know who you are and that did not go undetected. What's the bus schedule like? Come on. It's my moment. I get this rare moment. Yeah, let's let's be real, uh, guys, um, you know, in the chat who are kind of making, you know, snarky comments like, um, this is real and this is Tom's moment. Um, yeah. I was also wondering when your, uh, when your book comes out because you, you did send me this manuscript and I have some notes. Um, on a bunch of I'm, I'm troubled by those question marks. There are so many of them. Yeah, uh, there were just kind of a couple things. The question marks are more just kind of like lose that chapter. Um, well, there seems and, to be a lot of them. Yeah, I also thought kind of like some of the t chapter titles could be like, uh, they're a little like a long, like you, you have here like an afternoon with Papa Roach and I thought it could mm -hmm. just maybe be like Papa Roach. Just like kind of, or with Papa Roach, you know, like okay. with Papa Roach. Like, I don't think you need the whole um, afternoon. And like chapter two, so who is this Tom Sharpling anyway? Mm -hmm. Like, I thought maybe just Tom, you know, chapter two, Tom. Well, that's, that's, look, these are great. Let me just grab a pen. Can you see on. that, Tom? Oh, I see. I did, definitely. Yeah, I kind of crossed out everything else because it's like, it's kind of like the iconic, like, Tom or whatever. Um, high chapter school, two on, chapter Tom. four, high school, I thought could just be, um, school, school. These are, um, these are great. So yeah, before it comes out, I can give you some of these, uh, well, I have bad news. It exists already. So, um, but that can be for like the, like the second edition, maybe. Uh, what? maybe. Yeah. Um, school, Tom, Papa Roach. Yeah, the whole chat, I've basically just been staring at this prop I prepared, trying to find the perfect moment to whip it out. So um, I'm happy that went as well as I thought. Um, um, okay, so let's take some questions from the chat. And the most popular, most upvoted question on there is, uh, has sharing the embarrassing stuff made it easier to deal with? So the book has a lot of stuff that um, I guess this gentleman or, or, or lady or um, thinks uh, might be embarrassing. Um, what's your relationship with that, Tom? It's kind of a, it's kind of a, it's in, it's, it's happening in real time. Uh, it's something that I'm just feeling and, 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 processing because it's it's so new that it was this this book was just theoretical for the longest time and then just one day it's not theoretical and and people that I don't know have it and know all these things that I never thought I would necessarily thought I would tell anybody that they have now so that's a that's a bit of a there's like a mind-blowing quality to that that I'm still processing and, but it's, it's positive and I've gotten such nice, um, people have said just the nicest things about the book and I'm, I'm truly appreciative of people um, who have, I, my goal with that stuff was hopefully that people would read it and be like, well, look, this obviously only could happen to one person, but I see my version of that or the thing that happened to me that they find the commonality in in some of these things and realize that a lot of people have these have different things that they would think were uh, 
just to kind of maybe something they wouldn't share or they were embarrassed they were carried shame about or whatever that they would just realize it's like oh okay it's more common than i thought yeah and i don't think i mean i'm sure you're experiencing that you, you're worried about some of these things and how people judge you but then when people read the book and like you know it, 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 I, it not only resonates with them, but I think a lot of the experiences are like very relatable. And um, I mean, I, I imagine it must feel nice to just have people reaching out and, and saying, um, this meant a lot, or this like helped me to understand someone else was going through this stuff. Um, and also yeah. probably, I don't know, how does it like to have these things that have been like your hidden secrets for years or like you've, restructured your life and your your name yeah. to keep these things secret mm -hmm. like um which is something you talk about like and now you're they're all out there like does it feel like what's that like now that like strangers are coming up to you and kind of being like talking about your most personal stuff that you never even told friends about no it's a it's a definite it's a it, it's that's it's just, it's, it's, I feel like it's just beginning and I don't exactly know how it's going to feel, but it was the kind of thing that I didn't think I had any other option for me personally, other than telling it this way and doing this with the book, just so that it was, it was this, I just, I, I, it was the kind of thing where it's like, you just take a leap and then see, you hope that there's like a net there. So um and that's kind of what i did and i think i think there's a net or i'm gonna i think so i i personally am like so grateful like i i feel like i know you so much better mm -hmm. just through reading this and like i have so much to talk to you about now that we yeah. haven't covered because i have so much uh just having living through the kind of the, these experiences with you reading the book and people mm -hmm. should know like it's not a superficial like it's very funny the book is very funny and it's amazing how you weave in like laughs throughout even when it's like there is some like heavy stuff in there too mm -hmm. um Did you but laugh, it's also like right? it's not a superficial memoir it's like it you get um your 27 dollars worth for sure um yeah and i mean look book. to be honest what the, what are you going to get from michelle obama's book at this point that would make hers 150 percent cheaper than mine well not 150 that would make that would mean you'd get money back i think if you bought hers if it was 150 they'd give you they'd give you six dollars for getting her book um no but i i really did want it to be funny as funny as i could make it even if the stuff wasn't funny and particular stretches weren't funny and I just I I didn't want it to not be ultimately to not be a funny book and that was very important to me and you you laughed right you laughed I laughed out loud reading the book like I said oh, I was yeah. I, I was um it's I'm a hard laugher especially when I'm alone and mm -hmm. I laughed out loud alone mm -hmm. when reading the book not on the I, I, I was actually page. trying to remember the the, the turns yeah, anyways, there were like certain moments where it like turned very good and caught me and then I laughed. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'll, I'll remember those and uh, yeah. tell you about them later. Well, maybe next I, time some... you can post it, you can put a post it in that has a thing of, I like this, not just let's lose uh, this chapter. <laughs> no, no, there were, there, were, um, there were about four pages I really liked all together in this book. Um, I mean, at 200, oh, no. you know, people have things to do. So at 275 pages, it's a, uh... oh yeah, I guess I did have this note. The acknowledgements are blank in the copy I got. So I was mm -hmm. wondering um, if I mentioned in them when the book uh, came out at all. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, I look forward to seeing that in the, the copy. Um, um when i uh, hey, uh look at it look at really yeah yeah there you um, are right there nathan fielder 
Oh, I guess it looks like you did include a lot of names. So um yeah, no, I mean it's just I, I basically just went through my transcribed my my uh address book for my phone and just put that in. You're in there, you're in the app. I actually was assuming I was definitely not. That's only the reason I uh made that joke. But uh wow, I'm I'm actually flattered. So thank you, Tom. Um and I guess just in terms of what you're saying, um, someone had a comment in here uh, who is saying, you know, you reveal very personal things in this book and it was a wonderful read. Are you willing to talk more about these topics on the best show or is the memoir its own thing and you'll keep no, at it, some distance from your show? Oh, no, I can do whatever. I can talk about, I'll gladly talk about stuff on the book, but I do want to, I don't want the best show to, to change uh, purpose, but I think the point of the best show is it can kind of, the purpose, we can kind of slide the, the focus around sometimes and it can be more serious now and again. And, but I don't want it to suddenly be a, not a comedy show and just a serious um, show, but we can have, we can talk about it, of course. Um, and your live show, here's a question. Um, any plans for uh, Tom and John to perform live again? You, you did uh, a fantastic uh, run of live shows and I was so excited uh, or fortunate to get to see it in person. And like, um, like uh, even though I knew you, I like came back after and you guys signed a poster for me, which is now like framed in my house. <laughs> So I'm like uh, a, a big fan of those. Are is, are 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 people going to have the opportunity to see you guys live again? Yeah, I think we're going to when everything's back and and settled down. John and I are definitely going to do live stuff again. And um, yeah, without a doubt, we're very excited. We've been kicking around stuff for a few years now, and um, we'll we'll do a live show. Um, I'm going to also do stuff with Julie Klausner for. We'll do live double threats, uh, the podcast that I do with Julie. We'll do live stuff. Yeah, it's going to be very exciting uh, when everything gets back to normal. Here's an interesting question. How do you think um, the Tom of 10 years ago would feel knowing uh, what was in this book? What about the Tom 10 years from now? The Tom 10 years from now, I have. Maybe it's not an interesting question. Um, no, no, no. It's, it, it, no, I would just hope that I, that I, I feel like this book can be a thing for me to start. A, like this is, this is the end of one part of my life and the beginning of the next part of my life. This book kind of is the encapsulation of, of, uh, a big big part of my life and then now i'm gonna go uh i'm now i'm living a new life and um and that can be whatever the next thing is can be all about that but i wanted this book to kind of cover the the first part of things how would the tom from 10 years ago feel knowing what's in here would you be like i guess i would get to that point sure or i think he'd be um the tom from 10 years ago would be just like Wait, so Donald Trump is president, right? No, it'd be just like, no, I think it's- a, Also, the, I, uh, those apprentice things, you, that was probably about 10 years ago, right? When you were doing those apprentice reviews. Yes, it, it was 10 years so ago. Which are so funny. Like, that's something I was like crying, laughing, reading all those things and people, are they still available online? I think they're still up, yeah. And that was, um, it was one of those things where I wrote recaps of Celebrity Apprentice for uh, Vulture. And then they, um, <clears throat> then, then at one point when Obama had the, the, um, the thing where he, he uh, the whole, all the birther stuff was going on at that point with Trump kind of saying he's not a, um, he wasn't born in the US. And um, so then I was just like, well, look, I just think I'm tired of saying Trump in these things over and over, just promoting like his name. Anytime you say his name, it's it's a de facto uh, promotion for him because that's that's what matters him the most is hearing his name over and over. So it's like let's just call him fuckface now going forward. I don't want to say Trump anymore, 
And then the editor at Vulture was like, nah, that's a little schoolyard, don't you think? And it's just like, if only people could have known the way the world was going to turn and be just like, yeah, I think I was, I think I was on point with that one. And this poor ed, I also want to say this poor editor at Vulture, I've, I keep this story alive. And this poor guy, it was like one, one judgment call one morning for him. And he did not know the 10 years, the first of all, he didn't know that Trump was going to be president when he made that judgment call. And then I'm still beating this story 10 years later. He's just like, we get it. I said the wrong thing, okay? So I, I apologize to Josh, the, the former editor of Vulture for not letting it go. They're so, um, uh, they're, they're so good, those Apprentice reviews or uh, that, uh, not reviews, recaps that mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's all, it, I, I would actually recommend watching the show again, just to read Tom's, uh, recaps after because um it's amazing um i'd probably recommend if you have time to do that probably volunteering to help uh people in need if you have time to go watch an entire season of celebrity apprentice and then read 15 recaps of it there's probably somebody it's like it comes down to if you're leaning you could be cleaning so you and I have different recommendations and for, I guess, how people should be spending their time, which is fair. Yeah, you're saying go back and watch a, a season of Celebrity Apprentice from 12 years ago. I'm saying help your fellow <laughs> the fellow humans out if they, and see what you can do to make their lives uh, less, less painful. And that's what makes the world kind of cool is that you have different people with like different opinions about, about yeah. life. Absolutely. Um, no, that's that's the beauty of life. And um, so I guess, Tom, you've you've kind of now you've had this book and I guess from a uh, someone who's aspiring to get into comedy, you're you know, it kind of tracks like um, you're your in kind comedy. Of rise. You're not aspiring. Nathan. No, I'm you're saying in. for no, not as someone uh, for someone. Um, okay. I'm, 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 I'm teeing up this thing here. Someone wrote. Uh, you know, as a, t a television writer myself, it seems like the best comedians have a darkness to their emotional lives, myself included. Does this darkness inform your comedy in any way? What way would you say about that? I mean, I think I think darkness runs through pretty much everybody who makes comedy because it's they're the same thing in a way. You're just finding a way to ultimately laugh at at the 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 way life can be you're finding a way to to you're not denying the realities of life but you're trying to find a way to to pull humor from the realities of life um yeah uh sorry i guess i i like i'm a little i was kind of looking for the next question but like i forgot to uh listen to your answer um so I'm it, was, to, it was a great I, answer don't worry i'll catch up on i it. was um <laughs> i need to remember it's it's hard and this is like you know this is why you're such a good host is like you would know i don't know these things and i'm like mm -hmm. um so i'm now gonna i just want to go to the least uh, the questions in the q a are upvoted so the most popular and the ones that people want answered at the, are at the top I'm going to read the, the least uh, upvoted question now. Okay. Um, did you do anything special to celebrate, like eat any special meal or treat? Yeah, I did. I went out with uh, Julia and I went out and had uh, dinner afterwards uh, on Tuesday night. We went and had uh, food at a restaurant. And what did you eat for your meal? Oh, I had these uh, jumbo scallops. It was a Mexican place. I had jumbo scallops. And any sides? Yeah, a side of cauliflower. It was a little spicy, but I enjoyed it. And the drink? or? Oh, actually, that's a great question. The drink was like a, a fresca kind of watermelon with a little bit of um, mint, I believe, thrown in or a cucumber. It was great. 
Okay, well, I guess on that note, maybe um, we can kind of uh, kind of dock this ship into the port. Sure. Um, uh, before, I guess, you know, my goal with this is to um, make you as much money as possible by selling uh, copies of this book. So, um, because then next time we're out for a meal, maybe actually you'll, you, you could pay for me too. And that, that could be cool. Um, if you get, oh, uh, um, you but so I, I, I guess, um, I guess, I guess, uh, I would definitely recommend for people to get this book, uh, to read it. It's, um, it's truly incredible. And I'm actually very sincerely proud of you for it's, you can feel how much you put into this. Like it feels like a life spilled out, but I will say even for people that aren't, um, um, avid readers, um, this is a cool book to own and just having it on your shelf, I think will give you cred if people are over and they see it. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it's, it's, especially if you're one of those people that does the colors of the books all together, like it's mm -hmm. red, so if you need a strong red book for that, I think it would go great in any house. Yeah. Um, Tom, is there anything I didn't cover that um, you no, uh, no. you wish I did? And uh, do you regret asking me to do this? Uh, Nathan, it's, it's a, a literal opposite. This is such, this is so much fun. And I'm so touched by you doing this. And I know this is not where you, this is not where you live. You are not like doing these things all the time, but you did an insanely great job. And I'm so touched that you did. This. Okay. I don't, I know this is turning into the print. Thank you for saying that, Tom, but I didn't, I didn't mean to direct it, but I guess it does feel good for you to say that um, <laughs> as someone I admire as a host. No, um, you, seriously. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for doing this, Nathan. It really does mean the world to me. And thanks to everybody at Powell's for, for, for hosting this. Um, congrats again on the book. Uh, sincerely, it's, it's incredible. It's, um, it's, it's amazing. Tom. Thank you so much, Nathan. I love you. Okay. I love you too. Okay. Um, <laughs> ew, let's send it back. Why is he laughing? He laughed. <laughs> he said, that was, that was, that was beautiful. He said, I love you. <laughs> you said, I love you too. And apparently we're doing comedy. I guess. <laughs> Two guys. I think it's just not the tone of what Powell's expects in their bookstore, and it's uh, they probably are coming in here. To, you know, it's getting maybe a little emotional for them. Yeah, I don't know. That was, Powell no. does not love love, is what I'm. No, that was that, that was that was beautiful and touching, both of you guys. Oh, that was fantastic. Thank, thank you. you. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. Thanks. Thank you guys both so much for coming out tonight. That was right. uh, yeah, it was excellent and. Uh, so everyone, uh, please consider purchasing a copy of Tom's memoir by uh, visiting palace.com. Um, and yeah, it's on, it's, uh, it, it, it will be, uh, it's, although it's sold out, it will, it will, it's on, it will be on back order and we'll have more in about a week. So please order it now and you'll get it soon and right after that. So, um, and it is a fine red book that will look wonderfully on your shelf, as Nathan said. So, and uh Thank you both so much. And yeah, uh, have a good night, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Thanks. <laughs>